Very well, thank you. Oh, good. You're going to do the solo? <laughs> oh, that's you. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping she was going to solo. I was just going to be yeah, out. You can come up and sing with me. <laughs> oh, that's that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank I forget worship leader and and what's the other person? Who am I? Literally. You're Sue. Oh, we have no idea, Sue. <laughs> I don't know what am I. During the week, you know. Yeah. Well, <laughs> more than that. Fortune. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fortune tellers. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Steve. So Sue won't come up here and do this. Nope. I'll have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. To start this morning with uh, number nine in your white worship books, there. WWDs, open the eyes of my heart. Oh, I love this. Number nine. So I had this one, and I like it. It says, Nothing is impossible with God, from Luke 1, 37. 
So you can put that on your refrigerator and your purse or wherever and carry it with you. Um, the other thing is, just a little tidbit of information, today is National Animal Cracker Day. <laughs> it is, was it 150 years old, I think? They are, and they showed it on TV, and I, always look, I also looked it up just for your information. I just am full of it. They were the best things. Full of information. They're probably a little stale. Yeah, they're not old. No, they showed them making the new ones. Oh, I see. In the bear jar. Sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, are there other announcements, birthdays, anniversaries, whatever? Bob? How's that's the birthday Tuesday? Oh, you big mouth here. Alice has a birthday on Tuesday. Should we say happy birthday to Alice? 29, yes. right? 29, yeah. again and again yes, and again and again. Yes. And again. <laughs> Me too. Well, we'll do that. Then. We'll do that, Alice. Yes. He told. Yeah, he told. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Birthday. I'm sure Bob will treat you very well. He always does. <laughs> Anything else? We had a good time last night. Did you? Spaghetti up the road. Spaghetti. We had a good time too at our, mm -hmm. our my neighbors. We had chicken dinner, so sorry. We had spaghetti. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Sorry, chicken trunk spaghetti in my world. Well, you know, <laughs> someday I Not up there, I don't think. No. We did pretty well. Was it good? Good. Yep. Oh, yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bonnie did. Yeah, oh, Bonnie. Nice. She, she's nice. good. Yeah, I have to be in the mood for special. She may still not be awake, right? No. <laughs> no. no. Good. Well, that's great. That was at the United Methodist Church, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. In Lake good. Pleasant. Yeah. Oh, in Lake Pleasant. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Anything else? We're glad to see Janice and her uh -huh. son yes. here. He's from South Carolina, she said. Yes. Oh, very nice. How's the weather down there? Beautiful. Uh, <laughs> bring some up this way. When I call my sister in law, I'm not Teresa. <laughs> this past uh, Tuesday, I was in Lake Murray swimming, and it's every in the water is <laughs> no, oh, Okay, that's not fair. <laughs> but when I call my sister in Las Vegas, she'll be like, Guess what? It is here. I'm yeah. like, It's 30 here. <laughs> it's 90. Okay. okay. Oh, my <laughs> <green sun>. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Very nice. Well, welcome. So, our call to worship is from Psalm 4, which is on page 741 in the hymnal. Congregation will respond to <coughs> what is in bold print. Now, are we singing something? We are going to sing. Tell, yes. me, tell me the directions, because I don't... Okay, here are, are the directions. Here are the directions. Are the directions. We have a singing response that we will sing three times. See where they are. Would you like your... me to play it? Because it is something yeah. familiar. Yeah. So there you go. So, so we'll sing it. Mm -hmm. we'll we begin sing, it, right? We'll, we begin we'll sing it at the beginning. We'll sing it in the middle mm -hmm. where that little wire is. We'll, we'll sing it again. Right. So I thought that's what it was, but I wanted to And Sue's going to lead us in that, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I will. Oh, no. No. Oh, 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 no.
In peace I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, may we lie down and save me. life and hope out of death and despair to help us hear the invitation Christ offered to the disciples touch me and see me make us bold to grab hold of the risen Christ not for this day but for all our days may we offer our gifts this morning not to the church historical the church that was but to a church that is becoming that is still being born that Christ will bring into the future May our eyes and ears and hearts continue to hold on to him as we help Christ lead his church forward. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's turn to our opening hymn, number 462. In your hymn. Thank you. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Sounds like she's a little bit down. 
down for the count today, maybe? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's got a bad headache, she okay. said. She called yeah. me. Yeah. That's common with the the breathing. The breathing and all that. Yep. Deb Clem, she's not here in the mm -hmm. Well, Deb's in, Deb's in Niagara Falls Bowls. Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, wow. Yeah. She's yeah. Wrong, huh? Yeah. 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 She's having a good time. I saw it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so she's here on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Leona. she's having a great time. Yes. How about Leona? Leona's. Uh, uh, Eric, she had a rough night last night. Is yeah. that correct? So yeah, uh, I saw her. I saw her. Uh, when did I see her? On Thursday, I guess it was. And uh, she was doing well then. But we saw her Friday and tired her out. <laughs> so. Our biscuit maker Bev has knee surgery on Thursday. Yes, she does. Ooh. Yes, she does. So I'll pray for Bev and Rudy, who's probably more of a nurse, nervous wreck than Bev is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know, probably. <laughs> That's the yes. way Rudy is. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he won't be with us in practice. <laughs> so, pray for the Hughes family, if you would, please. We, we mentioned Mark before. Mark has been diagnosed with terminal cancer. So, yes. And then he's home on hospice, but the... Uh, there's a lot of stress there, and the ambulance was called for his wife yesterday, yeah. so mm -hmm. I'm not sure what that situation is, but let's pray for that family. And he's been an ambulance driver, a bus driver, everything at, at Camp of the Woods and everything else from soup to nuts, yeah. Mm -hmm. He's a young man with a couple of young children, fairly yes. young, one's yes. in high school, one's yeah, in junior one's high school. Mm -hmm. Up with us. Mm -hmm. That's terrible. Mm -hmm. Dear. Steve. Thank you for your prayers for my grandson. Mm -hmm. He's getting better. He's a very bad headache the last few days. Yeah. But his wife got it, and she didn't get it as hard as he did. Cool. That's good. So thank you all. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. Sure. I got one more. Yes. Pray for our schools and the kids. Ten weeks left. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'm counting. That's a Friday. You don't have the hours down? Is it? No. Okay. My, my one student, though, had how many days till um, Memorial Day? Yeah, I was going to say. He had it all figured out, so good for him. So, uh, yeah, we will yeah. do that. So, anything else? I got to visit my grandson again this week, oh. and that's always fun. Mm -hmm. He's just uh, starting to notice things. So, actually, I'll talk about that in a sermon a little later. <laughs> All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer in general, and uh, then for some more specific uh, needs. And uh, let me just mention that uh, if I'm stumbling over words and everything, I have a bleed in my eye, so you can put, pray for that. I'm, I'm seeing a specialist and dealing with it, but uh, it makes me see double and triple and not at all sometimes in the one eye. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, you never know what I might say here. <laughs> so... Uh, Anyways, it'll be fine, but uh, let's go to the Lord. Precious Heavenly Father, we do praise you and thank you. Thank you that we can be here this morning in, in uh, your, your church and, and in your community of Wells. We pray for those that aren't able to come here, the ones that are regularly here on a normal basis. We pray for them and wherever they may be. We pray for those online as well, those of you watching online. We welcome you. We pray specifically this morning for our, our nation, for the turmoil in the, that's going on in our nation, in the political realm, and in the uh, unrest and the rioting and all the uh, craziness that's going on here, the anti-police uh, and all that kind of stuff. Lord, we know that you're in charge of it all, but uh, we don't understand it. We'd like you to uh, show us you're there. Show us some stability. Be with us in, in that respect. Lord, we pray for our, our teachers and our schools are, are uh, there that uh, they will may continue to get back to normal and uh, the students get back into normal learning if they're not already. Pray for those that are struggling with the distance learning. Pray for our church teachers that are some in, some out, some afraid to go, some not willing to go to, to teach. Whatever the case, Lord, please be with them as well. We pray for our, our leaders of all kinds in, in our country and the, 
and also in our state and our community. Give them the guidance, Lord, and be with them. Lord, we pray that they would lead as, as you touch their hearts and let them lead in a, in a manner that you would be pleased in. We uh, pray for, for those, in, the, those that are hurting with disease or, or whatever uh, kind of uh, illness they may have, or uh, be it the co covert or be it uh, some other disabling factor, be it the disease of the body or disease of the mind. We pray for those with the, the virus. We pray for those with cancer. We pray for those that are alone and depressed and lonely, not able to see people. And finally, we pray for ourselves, Lord, that uh, you would be with us. We all have our own concerns. We pray for those unspoken requests, Lord. We know there are some of those out there that we are, aren't willing or not. We just, just don't want to share them with, with everyone. So, Lord, we know you're with them all, with us all, with them all. And we pray for those that mentioned this morning in our, in our prayer concerns, for Ann, for uh, Leona, and for all the others. We praise you for the joys we heard. And we, uh, we just give you the, all the praise and glory for, for all the good things you give us. And we know that uh, you're there, whatever we may be faced with. Now we, uh, we come to you with the words that Jesus taught us to pray when he was here on earth. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Marty has something to lead you on. Yeah. I asked Steve if uh, maybe in the white book we could have. My housemate's favorite hymn. I used it at her funeral. She's been gone about 10 years. And the words are just right. So let me play it through first, and then you join me. But while you sing, look at the words as you go. Think about them. Which one is it? What page? It's a handout. It's the handout. It's a handout. It hasn't gotten to the white book yet. Yeah, it's not in it's not it's in the It's in a different hymnal. It's in a different hymnal, and um, it's... It certainly is. Just listen first and then we'll come in on the first verse. <laughs>
a beautiful song. It is. So it will appear in your book soon. Um, you don't have to save those. But I'll make it. They'll be double sided because there'll be another song on the other side. <laughs> so let's go. Uh, it's time to uh, give back to the Lord whatever you're left to give back. And if it's not monetary, so service and uh, prayer is also very welcome. So we do thank you for it all. If you're online and you'd like to send something in, I think our post office box is 448. Is that correct, Alice? Yes. All right, I finally remembered. <laughs> <laughs> so we welcome that. We thank you for all your generous donations and your prayers and your, and your service. So uh, I'll ask Marty to lead us in the doxology. So if you'd like to stand and sing, you're welcome to do that. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. for all the things you give us, even though we're so undeserving. Lord, we uh, thank you for it all. We ask you to guide us as, as we uh, try to do our best to use these funds that uh, we are giving back for your service. Uh, lead us in how to use them for our church, for our community, and our world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now let's turn to uh, the White Worship Book again, in number 42. Number 42, turn your eyes upon Jesus. So, I mean, you know turn your eyes upon Jesus' chorus, but this is what the, the uh, verses. Yeah. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Maybe I better put my glasses on there. Well, sometimes they don't, sometimes they don't. Yeah, I don't have any problem with that. Just leave mine. Thank you. 
Jackson, uh, son uh, and Donna's uh, gospel album. But I couldn't get Alan to come in today, I believe that, so sorry. <laughs> First scripture reading is from Acts 3, verses 12 through 19, and you can find that in the Pew Bible on page 1695. <coughs> Hear the words of the Lord. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Men of Israel, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has given this complete healing to him, as you can all see. Now, brothers, I know that you have acted in ignorance, as did your leaders. But this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, saying that his Christ would suffer. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. And the second reading is from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7, and that can be found on pages 1900 and 1901 in your pew Bible. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. But you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins, and in him is no sin. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. He who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your word. Today we ask that you bless Steve as he preaches and teaches from the scriptures that have been read. Open our hearts and minds as your word is proclaimed, and may we hear with joy what Steve shares with us. Amen. Thank From Luke 24, 36 through 48, I have another scripture for you. Jesus appears to his followers. While the two followers were telling us, Jesus himself stood in the middle of them and said, Peace be with you. They were fearful and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. But Jesus said, Why are you troubled? Why do you doubt what you see? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have a living body, as you see I have. After Jesus said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. 
While they still could not believe it, because they were amazed and happy, Jesus said to them, Do you have any food here? They gave him a piece of broiled fish. While the followers watched, Jesus took the fish and ate it. He said to them, Then, Remember when I was with you before? I said that everything was written about me must happen, everything in the law of Moses and in the books of the prophet and the Psalms. Then Jesus opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He said to them, It is written that Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that a change of hearts and lives and forgiveness of sins would be preached in the name of all nations starting in Jerusalem. You are the witnesses of these things. Touch, see, believe, look, listen, and share. That's the name of my sermon this morning. And good morning to everyone again. So good morning to you online. These words, uh, why do you seek the living among the dead? These words were from the angel to the women who came to Jesus' tomb. Also, God's words to us. Jesus is risen. He's a guarantee that God's harvest will happen. He is our assurance that we too will be raised. Death no longer has a hold on us. We are God's eternal children, and death cannot separate us from his presence or his love. That's a quote from a devotion from, written by Phil Ware from the Heart Light Organization. It's a devotion, one of the many devotions I read every morning. and. Uh, it's usually a very, uh, very meaningful devotion. And that's the, the message that I think God's telling us this morning through the scriptures we've heard today. We are God's children, and as his children, we have an unspoken mandate to act as his children. So let's look, take a deeper look. We mentioned a lot of things already, the various scriptures. Let's start with Psalm 4. As, uh, as we read together in the beginning, and it mentions trust. David called out to the Lord with faith that tr and, the, and the trust in God that he would come to his rescue. It's like the trust we had when we were children. When we trusted our parents that would be there when we needed help. Maybe we were afraid of the dark in our rooms at night. Or maybe we needed mom to fix a boo-boo. Or we needed dad to say everything was okay when we heard a noise outside and didn't know what was going on. But you get the idea. Then in Acts scripture, we saw the people of Israel amazed when they, when they witnessed the man walk. That's kind of started, as Alice mentioned to me earlier, that started in the middle of the scripture, but before it, the, uh, uh, Peter... Uh, said he didn't have anything to give this man, but he said, get up and walk, so, so the, in Jesus' name. So we had a, that was what came before that scripture. But they didn't know what to think, and they tried to credit the disciples rather than God with the power. Let's think of how they may have felt, we, how we may have felt in a similar situation. It would have definitely been something that we'd never witnessed before. Let's think back when we were children and saw things for the first time. We may not remember, but for those of us that have children or grandchildren or have watched, watched other children grow up, we can begin to understand the amazement and the questions that come to mind. You see a theme developing here? Our first John scriptures, we talked about children. We have been given an amazing gift of being loved by our Heavenly Father God, and now we are called God's children. As his children, we respect him and try not to do things he would disapprove of. In other words, we try not to sin. We don't do it out of fear, but we do it out of respect for the relationship. We don't want to hurt our Father's feelings. Like when we were growing up, we did it out of, eventually we did it out of respect. Maybe we didn't do it right away. <laughs> so 
So, my children growing up, I suspect none of us were perfect. For sure, I know I wasn't. Likewise, I know I'm still not capable of being perfect or sinless, but how about you? As I said previously, we're not trying to hurt our father's feelings. Am I correct? Now let's look, take a look at the scripture that I read in the beginning from, from Luke 24, the one that you don't have or in, listed. Looking at Luke 24, 38 and 39, but Jesus said, why are you troubled? Why do you doubt what you see? Look at my hands, my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. Because a ghost does not have a living body, as you see I have. Even though they had been told in the scriptures that Jesus would rise again, they were in disbelief and afraid. Again, like children, we're all doubting and questioning. What would we have done? I got to see my newest grandson, Briggs, again this week. He'll be two months old on the 20th. A couple days. <laughs> as I watched his mom, Carrie, and my wife, Bonnie, hold him, and as I held him myself, I watched his little eyes look around in wonder, and I watched his facial expressions. He was particularly interested in the living room fan. <laughs> even though it wasn't doing anything, it wasn't even running, but he, he was fascinated by it. I'm sure he was saying, Grandpa, what's that thing doing up there? <laughs> that dark spot in the middle of the white ceiling. But as he lay on his blanket a little bit later, surrounded by his toys, he would reach out, touch, to feel, and to question. Of course, when possible, he wanted to put anything and everything in his mouth, too, and taste. <laughs> Although he's really, really very young, he's already questioning, wondering, exploring, and he's a doubting child of God like all of us. Jesus said to his disciples, Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch and see. Then he asked for four and ate some fish, and they believed. They believed him when they saw him eat something. We remember from another scripture that Peter actually did need to touch, or excuse me, that Thomas actually need, need, did need to touch and his, uh, put his hands in Jesus' side to believe. Remember the doubt in Thomas? Like all children, we question, wonder, and are very often in need of proof to believe. What does it take us to truly believe? For me, it's been a process of happenings in my life that have no other, other explanation but this. It had to be God. No other reason. There's absolutely no other reason. What has it been for you, or do you still wonder and question about this Jesus thing? Is he real? You've heard much of my testimony before, some of you. So I won't go into it in detail, but I will mention a few highlights. The heart attack, the cancer, the falling off the roof and walking out of the hospital in a few days. Then there's a time where the, uh, I almost put my dad's pickup over, the, uh, over a cliff, which he never knew about, maybe he does now. <laughs> yeah. And there was a time that I almost drowned because I got we, we rolled in or over in the vehicle and I was pinned underwater. And so uh, it had to be God. There's no other question in my mind. My life's been filled with moments when I know God was there. What about yours? We can't reach out and touch the wounds, feel the scars from the spear and the nails or the welts from the whip that Jesus endured for us. But we can all experience God's presence in other ways. Perhaps you're thinking now about the times when you felt close to God in your life. When you too felt it just had to be God protecting you or coming to your rescue. 
We can also see and feel God's presence when we marvel at his creation. The countless number of stars in the nighttime sky. The beauty of the flowers in the field. Or the splendor of the fall in the northeast. Some of you are great outdoors people, I know. Particularly one back there. <laughs> God's presence is in the little things around us, all around us, every day, wherever we go. Let's go back to the first round, John scripture, and see what great, and, and see this. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called the children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that they did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be, has yet to be made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for he shall, for we shall see him as he is. I think of what an honor that is. When Christ appears, we shall be like him. We are children of God, and we should be like Christ, our brother. Wow. One of the reasons I would one of the questions I was asked about my new grandson is this. What does he look like? Does he look like his mother? Does he look like his father? Who does he look like? I would guess that I'm not the only one that's heard that kind of question before. And very often there is a resemblance to our parents. Recently, one of my cousins commented on one of the Facebook posts that I put out there for the Easter sunrise service, and she said, from a distance, you look like your father. <laughs> well, I know that's probably true, because I've heard that before. I, people do see much of my dad in me. We all know that we can see our, uh, that, that in others, excuse me, we all know we can see that in others too. Thinking about that and what we've been talking about earlier today, let's take time to consider this. We have heard and we know that God is our Father and Jesus is our brother. Do others see the light, their likeness in us? God loves us as his sons and daughters. Do you remember what we discussed earlier when we talked about the first John scripture and our relationship to God, our Father? As his children, we respect him and try not to do things he would disapprove of. In other words, we try not to sin. We don't do it out of fear, but we do it out of respect for his relationship. We don't want to hurt our father's feelings. No, we don't want to hurt our father's feelings, and we don't want others to get the wrong idea about our father by the things we do, the way we act, or the things we say. We've been talking about our purpose here in this church and in our community for a number of weeks now. I think we've all come to realize that, or at least ponder the, the fact that we've been put to here for a reason and what, the, what is that? Each of us has a different set of skills, different gifts in various towns. Because of that, we can all reach out to others in different ways. There are people that I can talk to, but there are people that you can talk to that I can't talk to, so, because they just won't listen to. You know what I mean. You may have heard that you may be the only Bible a person will ever see. That's true. Many people we meet will never set foot in this church or any other church. For that reason, it's important that what others see in us is a reflection of God, our Father. God shows his presence every day in many ways. He makes himself known through the things he does for us and by the beauty in all things he has made. And he has made everything. He puts blessings in our paths each day in the people we meet and the things we see. Sometimes we're too busy to see. Often we are focused on other things that make us too blind to see. That's one of Satan's biggest weapons, making us too busy, too busy. He distracts us, 
Makes us too busy to realize what God has done and what he's doing for us all the while. We need to remember who we are. We are God's children. We need to remember that God is there for us. We need to remember that we can cry out to our daddy like little children when we are lost or in need of help, like Psalm 4. We need to know that dad is there and has the power to do all things, just like he made the crippled man walk in Acts, the Acts scripture. We need to remember that as God's sons and daughters, we have been greatly blessed and have been given the tools and the power to help others in need. Most of them all, we need to remember where that help comes from. Remember how it has helped us and saved us in dark and hard times. And we need to go out of these doors and share our stories as God's children with those we come in contact with. Because that's how they come to believe. Because when we share our stories, they think about how the they may have similar stories. I recently saw a cartoon drawn uh, uh, on Facebook that asked where the church was. It showed people doing all types of things out in the street, riding bicycles, sitting on benches in, office, in offices, just talking and sharing things with others. Yes, that's the church. We are the church. Wherever we are, we are the church. We are God's children and his reflection. We are his hands, his feet, and his voice in the world. It doesn't happen without us, and he's with us on the way. We will see him, and we will feel him, sometimes in the biggest things in our lives, when we know it's just God, or sometimes in those little things we see every day, and then those people we meet every day. And mostly, that's where we see God in the little things. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's sing that song a little bit. <coughs> that is in your white worship books. Number 32. This is, a, this is a song that I think I told you before that God gave me on a camping trip when I was looking at those little things up on the St. Luke Lawrence Freeway. As I watched the sun Come up, the fog was ri uh, rising over the uh, seaway, the ships were coming and going, and all the uh, geese were there, and just the little things everywhere. <laughs>
for those little things out there, right? Let's pray. Precious Heavenly Father, we do praise you and thank you that you give us the big things and the little things every day. Lord, we ask you to uh, be with us as we try to do your will, do your bidding, make you proud of us. We don't want you to be just disappointed with us, Lord. So as we leave these, these doors, let us be your reflection. Let us others see, let others see in us your reflection, your hope, your love, your salvation. Let us spread the word by the things we do and the things we say as we try to do our best to be your hands, your feet, and your voice in this community and wherever we go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's, uh, the, the benediction I'm sharing today is from Romans 11. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and unfathomable are his ways. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. Have a great day, great week, and look for those little things out there. Enjoy. So there's coffee on out there. There's some goodies out there. So you're welcome to share. Thanks for coming this morning.